Hi, my name is Bob. My landmark character's name is Mortok. I'm here to give you just a quick rundown on the features of the game and how to play. Well, let's start off. First off, you can see the user interface in front of me. I personally like splitting the windows, so I'm going to pull the chat window up here. That way I can see my chat and my loot as I'm harvesting. What you see in front of me are the spires. The spires are going to be where you're going to start. So let's run down there. On the spires you have a couple pieces of equipment and a few other things that are of importance. This is the stone forge. It'll be the first item you use on the spires in game. You click on the stone forge, it allows you to make a stone pick and a copper axe. Or I mean a copper pick. Then you can make a stone axe or a tin axe. Building tools will let you make an add, delete, and heal tool. I'll go over the tools a little later. It'll all also let you refine your metal, turning your raw materials into ingots and crafting components. It'll tell you how much coal you've harvested so far. So that's what we have there. The other item you're going to use is the basic workshop. At the basic workshop you can start by making a portal shard. What the portal shard allows you to do is port to your claim or the portal spires from wherever you are in game. It will also allow you to make a couple basic accessories. Kenai Band, they all have different abilities. Kenai lets you see things better. Anklet Abounding lets you jump higher. It will also let you make your first claim flag. Once you have a claim set you can make attached claim flags which will expand your claim. Here's the most important thing that you can do here. You can make crafting stations that you can take to your own claim and use there. To do any of the progression in the game, you're going to need a tinkerer's workshop on your property and an alchemy station. So once you make those, you can put those on your property. I recommend making a tech forge or a stone forge too, but you need those two stations to be able to progress in the game. So that just gives you kind of a basics. You can also work stone here, work wood here so that you can build with it, make trees, which are props, rocks, and plants to give you an idea. There's quite a variety of different types of things you can make as you go through here. So those are the two most important items here. Now, I'm going to tell you I'm not affiliated with Sony in any way before I talk about this next part. You got a chest here and say you bought one of the packs. If you lose an item or haven't received it yet after buying your pack, the item will end up in this chest and you can come here and claim it. As you see, it wouldn't let me claim anything because I'm not missing it. Now, there's three different packs. The Settler Pack, which is $19.99. The Explorer Pack, which gives you a Ring of Bounty and a Mega Pocket, which increases your storage ability. The Ring of Bounty gives you an extra 10% in harvesting. And you're going to do a lot of harvesting in this game, so it's a great plus. The Trail Blazer Pack, which is $99.99, gives you everything the other two packs do, plus a bit more. The best two things it adds is the Mastercraft Bracer, which allows you to make, make better tools. Better tools means you harvest faster, again saving you time and allowing you more time to build and explore. It also gives you a Void Vault. Void Vault's a pretty neat item. Any claim you go to that has a Void Vault, you can go up to it and grab your things out of it. So it gives you the ability to go anywhere in game and get your things. Also, at the Central Spires, you have the mailbox. 
you click on the mailbox, it'll let you send a message to anyone in game, put their name in, type your message. It also allows items to be sent. So someone can send you a pick or an axe or some of the building materials you need. Um, you'll receive them immediately in game too, so it's a really neat feature. So we've kind of got over the things on the spire. Now I'm going to go over the portal shard in the middle. That crystal there, you get close to it, you put your mouse cursor over on it and you'll see a hand. You click on it, it'll show you all the different worlds. You can pick any world you want. You can cross servers. And it also gives you all the islands. As you can see by looking at the islands, they're in tier 1, 2, 3, and 4. The different tier of islands have different materials on them. The materials are also done in tiers. Being as you're just starting, you're going to be on a want to stay in the tier 1 that you start the game in to get going. So I kind of showed you how that works. You select, you hit confirm, and then you'll port to that area. I'm just going to stay here for now because I'm on a tier 1 to give you a, a little more of a basics of the game. So now we've kind of covered that. Let's go over the user interface a little bit. You have two windows here, a loot and a chat. If you grab them when they're together, you can grab it and move one. Just hold on to your left mouse key and let go when you have it where you want it to be. The friends feature is really nice. You can click on it, it'll show you who's online. If you right click on them, you can invite them to a party, but they have to be on the same world you're on. You can also remove them, or you can teleport to them, which is a great feature. No more running from world to world and island to island to get to your friends. You can teleport once every half hour. So that's just a quick rundown on that drop down. Over here, you have your material selection items. You click, I'll go over this box, and it'll drop out the materials you have. As you can see, it's on stone. That, that gives me the dirt, the sand, the stone, and all the other type of stone items I've harvested, gems and such. And you can select it, and it'll change it up here. And that's now what I'm building with when I go to build. I'll explain a little more of that later. You can go wood or the minerals, the metals that you harvest. And then water. But the liquid we have, all you have right now is ice and snow. But again, this is a beta, so the game is constantly evolving. Down here, you have your bar with all your tools. There's multiple bars. You can select with your mouse. Or you can go control and whatever number you want to switch between the bars. Down in this corner here you have your main options menu, which will allow you to look at your character, your inventory, the map, although you can pull the map up with the M key. It tells you right here what keys you can do things with. Claim management, options of course are to change your video settings, which you saw me doing in the very beginning. Then you have this here, which is different items that you've already made and made templates of. It allows you to inspect what, it's, what it takes to build it or to place it somewhere on your claim. Then you have your inventory, which you can pull up by hitting I. As you can see, your inventory, this is my base inventory, the bag's open. There's a few slots. These are different items that I've crafted. These are out of items you get from sifting dirt or harvesting. These are items you get that you craft. Some of them you get in-game. Here's a claim flag that I crafted earlier just to kind of show you what a claim flag is. Now, you go out and you find where you want to place your claim and you right click on that it'll end up in front of you and you can move it around and you can place your claim now if you pull up the map you can hit show claimable area and it'll show you places where you can't put it because it's too close to other claims and then where you can so you can go select your claim spot that way now the other section of the inventory shows all your harvested materials 
these are all things you build and craft with. As you can see, they're numerous. There can be another window here if your inventory ends up over full because you didn't play, pay your claim maintenance fee, your upkeep fee, and it'll have a timer on it. At that point, you have 24 hours to get rid of that. Now, that's another window claim management you need to pay attention to. You have upkeep. If I was on my claim, it would show me the claims I was on. And then you have your upkeep management. Right now, they allow you to pay for eight days. So I'm going to put 3,000 copper because my day fee is 1,500. And now I'm good for eight days again. So we're good to go there. Well, that kind of gives you a basics on the user interface. Now, up here in these windows here, at this point in time, all communication will go to this window. Although, if I was to join a group, there'd be a spot here that says party. So let's go over talking to people a little bit. If there's someone you want to talk to, you can go forward slash T for tell, and then type their name. When you type their name, you can type in your message and hit it and they'll receive it. Now if they reply to you, then you can reply back to them. It makes it a lot quicker by just going forward slash R. If there's people around you that, want, that you want to talk to, you can just go forward slash S for say. And that'll put the what you're typing in a say in the immediate area. Or you can go forward slash Y to hit it throughout the zone. This is a friend of mine. He just invited me to a party. So I'm going to hit accept. And now we're in a party. So there we go there. When you're in a party, you get a harvesting bonus. Everything I harvest, he gets. Everything he harvests, I get. Just to show, or just to give you an example. Now again, copper is going to be the most expensive thing. Now this is someone's claim here. It's just a base claim. They haven't done much, but they have their equipment up there. So now I'm going to go down here and show you, if you look at the selection bar down the bottom, I can use the number keys to select which item I want to put in my hand. Number one puts the axe in my hand, so now I'm ready to harvest trees. I'm just going to show you a tree real quick. When I get up to the tree, if I put my cursor over it, it's just a pointer now. I'm too far away from the tree. Once I'm in, with it in range, it turns into an axe. So now I'll click and harvest the tree. One click harvest a tree. It's kind of nice and easy. Now, I saw some copper on the ground over here. So I'm going to look down at the copper there. I'm going to hit two. And now I'll harvest the copper. This is going to be the first item you really start har harvesting. So I just harvest some copper. If you look over here in this window, it shows you what I'm harvesting copper ore, elemental copper, snow, dirt. It shows you what I just got from harvesting that. Now I am not using your beginning pick or axe, so we'll start from there. The other tool you're going to make, which you need to harvest things, is a sickle. The sickle will harvest the plants that are harvestable in the game. Let me see if I can find a harvestable plant real quick here. There's four of them at the moment. Ah, there's a sun blossom. So now I'll go up to the sun blossom. When I put it over, it highlights like the trees do, and the axe symbol shows up because I'm close enough to harvest it. There, I just harvested a sun blossom. So that's kind of the basics. Shows you what's going on. Here's actually some cotton. Kind of the basics. Shows you how to get in, shows you how to harvest. You're not going to have a sickle until you build some stations on your own property. Well, now I'm going to take you to my claim real quick and show you some of the stations. So we're going to go to the spires up here. Click on the spire once I have the hand. My claim that I want to go to is on satisfaction for the world and the island is peak so I'm going to scroll down to satisfaction peak peak is a tier 2 zone as you can see here the zones are in tiers 1 2 3 and 4 
Again, that's what materials you would harvest from those islands. Now I'm porting. This will take a minute or so. Okay. As you can see up here in this corner, it's real faint. Let's see if I get up close to something dark so you can see it. Right up here, it says Landmark Beta, Mortox, Satisfaction, Peak, Tier 2. Okay, so over here is my claim. We'll just go up to my claim over here and I will show you some of the equipment. Now, as I told you, the things you really need to make over here are the Tinkerer's Workshop. From the Tinkerer's Workshop, oh, now I can make a grapple hook. Grapple hook makes it great for getting around hard places, climbing steep mountains. We got the utility again. You can make the portal shard. Clicking a portal shard will allow you to teleport from wherever you are to a portal or one of your claims. You can make the other claim flags here, too, just like the other one. Now, in the props, you have a lot more props to make here. This will let you make doors, tables, windows, candles, numerous items. We changed islands, so we lost the group. He just re-invited me to the group. Numerous islands. You can make a mailbox for your own property, which is a great thing. And then we scroll down even further and we'll get to crafting stations. So like out there, I can make all the stations right here on my own property now. Refining station. You make a refining station, the superior saw table increases your yield by 10% of any wood or um, stone you work. The exceptional by 20 and the legendary by 30%. Then you have a sifter. The sifter sifts your dirt, stone, and sand and gives you minerals or gems. If you go to the tradesman sifter, then you can even sift out some of the artifacts that you restore, which I'm showing you right now down the bottom of my inventory. These bottom five items here, you restore these to upgrade web or tools so you need at least a tradesman sifter for that you can also work stone and wood here just like out on the portal so I'm gonna close that here now I'm just gonna show you right over here this will allow me to work more things this here will allow me to make lumicite which glows and puts off a great color um, work obsidian and things for building and, and crafting. It also gives me a 30% increase on all the wood I make for building. Now all the other refining stations work basically the same. This is the sifter that you can make off that. As you can see, I clicked on the sifter. I can sift the dirt and get bags of relics it's random on what I'll get and it goes into your inventory I'll just craft one to show you and I'll move my inventory window for just a minute as you can see it gave me a tradesman bag of relics dirt when I right click on it to open it it tells me I got a ruined idol so that's what we get there now this is the alchemy station the alchemy station will take different hardwoods that you refined and you can take a basic heartwood and combine it with some of the special heartwoods to make items you need to make better tools, um, better items, different refining stations. From here you can also refine wood, but you can also make the refining stations for the infusers. The infusers do a little more than it does here. 
And it'll also let you get up to the 30% bonus when you can make the legendary. So as you can see here, instead of getting 1 for, or 10 for 10, I get 13 for 10. And then you can infuse different plants to make other items. Now we go from there to the outfitter's table. The outfitter's table let me make different suits that I can put on, different colors, different looks. It'll also let me make a much greater array of uh, accessories. Messenger signet, great one. It helps you run faster. It'll also let me make the superior loom. So when I go to refine my textiles and make cotton so that I can make the suits or, say, some of the props you need that for, I get one-to-one -one yield here. But now if I go to the loom, it does it in bigger quantities so it's faster, and I get 12-to-1. You can't make... Are all the materials are not available to make the legendary loom yet. Well, I showed you the stone forge up at the portal. This here's the tech forge. Um, the tech forge will allow you to do the same thing the stone forge does, except in up to higher tiers. You can make the tungsten through the mithril pick, and you can make all the axes. The ethereum axe isn't available yet. You can also make a sickle here, which you can't make out there, which I showed you is for harvesting the plants. You can make a pulverizer, which allows you to dig through the earth a lot faster without harvesting the dirt. It will also let you make the other building tools that you can't make, like the selection smooth paint and align tool. It will also let you make the smelters. Now the smelter right next to this is the legendary. But you can redo your metal here. You just get a one-to-one. -one. You lose that 30% bonus for going to Legendary. So here we go to the Legendary Smelter. You click on it. And I can click on any one of these and go Craft. And if you look over here, it just gave me 1310 ingots for that. Well, that's a basic on getting started, what to make, and how to get around. I'm just going to give you a real quick on the building tools. If I hit Control-1, it switches me up to the building tools, or I can just use the up and down buttons with my mouse. So we have a paint tool, which if I go over here, it'll paint whatever I go over purple, see? Now, since I really didn't want to do that, I'm going to go Control-Z, and now my floor is back to marble. Then you have a line tool. You can change the size that you start with from a one voxel to numerous. By hitting N, you can change it from a one to four box. But then I can pick some spot, and look, I just filled that whole area built with that. I really didn't want to do that, so Control-Z deletes it. Then you have an add tool. I'm going to add a block there, a block there. Then you also have a minus tool. Subtract that and that. Then you have a selection tool, which allows you to... I'm going to shrink that down to a one box and I'll show you. You can actually use it to measure, to center things. It's a great tool. So you pull it out here and as you can see, I'm nine voxels. By 24 voxels, one voxel deep. So I can hit add or minus or paint and change that. I'm going to hit paint and now I'm just going to paint that purple. So there we go. I'll escape out and you can see it's painted purple. Again, I really didn't want to do that, so I'm going to go control Z. Then you have a smoothing tool which lets you work on shaping things a bit. That's something you're going to have to work with and get used to. Well, thank you for watching. Hope it was useful. You have a wonderful day. Hope you enjoy the game.